you've probably noticed as I have that life is filled with new things. Some we likely don't remember, like when we first were born. And I think that's why I make babies cry. It's just a real adjustment, very, very new. And maybe it's the reason why they don't talk either, or they could really entertain us. Anyway, we face many new things in our lives, learning to walk so we can get around without crawling everywhere, learning to talk so we can make our needs known, ask questions. My mother had a stroke when she was a bit younger than I am now. She was only in her 70s, and she had to learn to talk again. Sometimes that was very amusing to us, not to her. Our first day at school is likely to be somewhat traumatic, more for our mothers than for us. It takes time to get adjusted and accustomed to new things. When I first went to kindergarten, we went out for recess. I'd never done that before, but when it was finished, I just walked home. I thought we were through for the day. Through all of the grades, my best friend and I would always look at the signs that were on the doors of the teacher's classroom to see if we could be together. We managed that a few times. It just made it not quite so new if I could be with my best friend. There are likely things that we once learned, things that may be very important that we have forgotten. Maybe we all need to go back to school together. Sometimes in our lives, we move to a new place. This happened to me when I was about 17. We left my wonderful hometown of Cedar City and moved north to Mapleton. And that was a tough adjustment, especially I went to school and it was, it was just kind of a hard beginning. But with the wonderful friends in that school, it ended up being a very, very good year. Some of us have had adjustments of, we've had new teachers. We got used to the teacher we just had. And now we have a new teacher and we've got to get adjusted to her or him. I remember going on my first mission. I was 22, almost exactly 60 years ago this month. <laughs> wow. I was sent to Taiwan, which is in the news a lot lately. I love Taiwan. I pray for them. But almost everything was new, including the food, yes, but also including the language. As I studied Mandarin, which has tones, that means if you say the wrong tone, you say the wrong word, and our companions helped us, I remember when I was learning, I would bob my head. <laughs> kind of like a musical instrument in my head. But the first long thing that our companion would teach us was to tell the experience that Joseph Smith had. And we would ride our bikes out to the edge of, a, of our town and practice and practice. And one day she said, you're ready when it's time for the Joseph Smith experience, it's your turn. I didn't want to be ready. It was hard not to pray that nobody would be home or they wouldn't let us in if they were home. But finally, we were in the home of a Mrs. Leem sitting on the floor, as was the custom, a lot of customs from Japan. And my companion began to teach. And then she paused and looked over at me and I knew it was time. The feeling that came to me at that moment was, all you can do is the best you can do. And so I did the best I could do with my, with my little noises, probably with my head bobbing. That was Joseph Smith. They say the last name first. Something incredible happened. The Holy Ghost took my noises over to Mrs. Lean. And a boy went into a grove of trees and prayed. And the Father and the Son appeared to him. That was an incredible thing in my whole life, not just on that particular mission. I testify that the gift of the Holy Ghost is a wonderful blessing in our lives. I remember the blessing of 
a brother Ocampo in the Philippines who wanted to know how to pray. He had been praying his whole life, some memorized prayers that he learned. But we taught him that he could talk to his Heavenly Father. And I'll never forget the first time he was ready to do that. He asked a few more questions. And then he suggested we all kneel down. We had to get permission to do that as missionaries and not just expect they'd let us do it, that it, they would appreciate it. We knelt down together. He waited almost a whole minute. Later, when my companion and I talked about it, we decided that this was, yes, something new, but one of the most beautiful things in his life thus far. He was about to speak to his Heavenly Father from his heart for the first time. He had told us he would pray in English. He knew a little bit so that we could correct him if he would do anything wrong. He wasn't about to do anything wrong. So pray a little bit and then sisters. Yes. If I am slow, will he wait for me? Yes. Then he'd try a little bit more. Sisters. Yes. I can say anything I want. Oh, yes, anything. A little bit more. Sisters? Yes? This is very beautiful. No? Oh, this is very beautiful, Brother Ocampo. A little tiny bit more. And then? Sisters? Yes? Does he know Tagalog? Oh, yes, he knows Tagalog. And then he poured out his soul to his heavenly father. I remember wishing I understood enough Tagalog to know what he was saying. And I got a little message from heaven saying, he's not praying to you. Don't worry about it. I'm so thankful for the experiences I've had. Life is full of new things. In, in 82 years, I have run across many new things from learning to walk, to learning to talk, to learning to drive, to learning to ride a bicycle. <laughs> it is a blessing to receive heavenly help. My life has been filled with heavenly help. Yours likely has been too. And I encourage you to thank Heavenly Father for the wonderful blessings that have come when you've needed them and when it's been the right time for you to receive them. I'm glad I could be with you today. I'm a very slow turtle, but I close my little message. In the holy name of our Heavenly Father's beloved Son, Jesus Christ, amen.